In today's video, we're going to take a look at the yield function in Excel and compare it to the price function and talk about some of the differences that we discover between these two functions. The yield function is a very straightforward function that calculates the yield on a bond such that when the yield is supplied to the price calculation, the price that was supplied to the yield calculation will be the same. So what does that mean? Let's look at a very simple example. Let's take a bond that we're buying on the 7th of April 2010 that matures on the 15th of August 2012. And let's say this bond has a rate of 2.5% uh, and let's say we bought it at a price of 98.5. It has a redemption value of 100. It pays interest twice a year and the basis code is 1. We'll enter the yield formula in this cell And we see that it has a yield of 3.164%. Now, we're going to enter the price formula in this cell, which is going to take almost all the same inputs as yield, except that instead of putting in the price, we put in the yield, and then we continue to enter the same parameters. And we can see that the price of 98.5 calculated by the price function using the yield function is the same price as has been input into the function and in fact if we change a bunch of the parameters let's say we bought this in the last coupon period and the price was 99.995 we get the price return from the price function based upon the yield that was calculated by the yield function so all of that works very very nicely now we're going to look at a few examples where that in fact is not the case so we open up a different worksheet within our workbook and we're now going to look at some calculations of yield in the final coupon period of the bond which means that there's no more coupon interest there's only the redemption amount and the interest at maturity that's going to get paid so we're going to start with a bond that is settling on the 29th of December 2009 that matures on the 25th of May 2010 and to keep things simple, we're going to keep an interest rate of zero. We're going to give it a price of 99. Uh, the redemption amount will be 100. It pays interest twice a year. And we're going to have a basis code of uh, zero. And we will enter the yield calculation in this cell. And it uses, of course, all the preceding cells. and we're going to enter the price calculation in this cell. And we can see that the price returned on this date is equal to the price that was input. Now, we're going to enter a few more dates. We're simply going to increase the date by two and everything else is going to remain pretty much the same so we can just copy it down <gasps> and look we can see that on the 31st of December okay we returned a yield such that the price was not equal to the price that was input that's pretty interesting we can also see that the yield for the 30th of December and the 31st of December are in fact the same also pretty interesting so before we explore that a little bit too much further I want to put in one more example we're going to have a bond settling on the 20th of January 2009 that matures on the 31st of January 2009 and again we'll just keep it at a zero rate we'll put it in a price of 99.9 .9. redemption is 100 frequency is 2 basis is 0 and we can just calculate the formula and we can see right away that this is not the same price and we're going to, again, put in a couple more dates. And we can copy everything down. And we can see that in no case did the price calculation return the input price based upon the yield that was calculated. So that's really, you know, kind of a problem because it fails sort of the first test that's required for the yield calculation. So 
the yield calculation in the final coupon period is actually something that can, we can calculate on our own. And there's just a, a couple of pieces of information that we need in order to do that. So we need to calculate something called E, which is the number of days uh, in the coupon period. And there's an Excel function that will actually uh, do that. That function is the coup days function. So we can calculate coup days. And that requires the settlement, the maturity, the frequency, and the basis as input. Okay, and we can see that it's 180 days. And then we need to know the days from settlement uh, until redemption. And um, that we're going to call the days from settlement to redemption. And there's also an Excel function that will do that. Um, coupe days NC. And we will type in settlement, maturity, frequency, and basis for that function as well. Okay, and that tells us that there are 146 days. And we will copy all of these uh, formulas into the cells below them. And we are now then going to put in our own calculation of yield. So in th this cell, we're going to enter equals uh, the, the redemption divided by the price minus 1 times E, right, which is over here, divided by the days from settlement to redemption times the frequency. Okay, and that gives us a calculation of yield. And as we can see very nicely, that agrees with the yield calculation here. And we're going to now recalculate the price using the price function in Excel. We're going to use the same uh, settlement date. The rate is zero, except now we're going to use our manual calculation and keep the rest of the information the same. And we can see we got the price that was input, and now we can simply copy all these things down. Oh, and look at that. We now have gotten, in fact, the inputted price. So we can see that this column is equal to this column. Hmm. So w what can we tell from this? Well, what the the most important thing that we can tell is in fact that the excel calculation of this value because it seems that this is always 180 the excel calculation of this value in ye, in the yield function is different than the calculation in the price function so in fact we can see that this is in fact off by one day okay and that all of these are off by one day well well how can we see that well this Right? When we do our manual calculation for on the 21st, we say that there's only nine days left. But we can see that the Excel calculation of yield is equal to our calculation of yield on the 20th, when we say there's 10 days left. So it's very easy to see that there is a problem with the calculation of the number of days from the settlement date to the redemption date in the yield calculation. The price calculation seems to be okay but the yield calculation seems to be a problem.